Welcome back to another episode of TVGP's Critical Misses, where uh, this is our fourth out of five musicals this season. Uh, I'm your host, Boston. Dream as always is Moonpeer. Hello, governor. I know hey. nothing about American history, mate. Would you educate me, please? <laughs> I, pl I played Assassin's Creed 3. I know enough. Uh, we're going to... literally <laughs> what I know. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about uh, Hamilton here. I was going to say 2020's Hamilton, uh, but it's also like 20... 2005's Sorry. Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it has had a long and storied history. Um, yes. I... So, okay. I will, I will admit something here. Oh no! I don't want to watch this. <laughs> oh wow! So here's okay, the thing. So ha have you seen it? Number one. No, I have not. So <clears throat> neither have I. Which this is the musical we alluded to last Perfect. episode. Right. Where this is the one I have not seen. So m my thing is, and I ninety nine point nine 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 repeating percent of the time, I don't care about this. But the like point oh 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 whatever one oh, percent fan base issue. This is a hundred percent a fan base issue. Oh wow! So this is the this is the Parks and Rec fan base. This is the Rick and Morty <laughs> fan base. This is that issue. Yeah, okay. because I get that it's beloved, and I think that's great. Like I this Hamilton's rise to popularity, and especially its. Um, uh, sort of unfortunately timed home release has really brought a lot of people into enjoying plays and stage plays and musicals. And I think all of that is super great. Mm -hmm. I just wish they would sort of stop talking about it 100% of the time. And like, normally I really don't care. Like, uh, like there's put in this, the meme image of like, let people enjoy things. Like mm -hmm. that's me. For almost everything else, this I is just... the two buttons meme where it's like let people enjoy things or tell them to they must enjoy it. <laughs> right. And my problem with stuff like this is, um, when it seems to encompass someone's identity, that's when I start pushing away from it. Where it's like, okay, well, I'm you're just you're pushing me further away from this thing you love because dude, how are you still talking to me based on how much I love Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing not it's not your entire identity it's a facet of what makes you have you, you not seen the green car with the big gray x <laughs> on the front of the house there's just, there's just a spray painted phil spencer uh mural yeah. on the side of it you, you should he's see riding the unicorn got, but i can't show it live on stream unfortunately because it's true. in a questionable location that's right i have seen it and it's a it's a beautiful piece of art um but i i think that's that's my problem is the the fervor for for some people where it's the the only thing they watch the only thing they listen to cough cough mm -hmm. the office us fans you know like it, it's it's I, so i could also throw nine inch nails fans into that boston which you consider God. yourself to be a part of that yeah they are they are uh what did trent Reznor call them recently um passionate and infuriating <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's, which, to be honest that, that might be the best description for this kind of fan base it's fair yeah so I, I think fans too like every wrestling yeah. fans everything yeah. has it and i and i think that's why um i've been so hesitant to watch this mm -hmm. is because there's that fervor over it um to be honest the only problem with that favor is, is it feels like no matter what you do and what you think it's not going to be good enough oh you loved it you didn't love it enough right. oh you right. didn't love it here are the 15 reasons why you're wrong right someone starts like singing uh uh one of the songs to you and they're like and it's like i don't know all the words man like i just watched it yesterday mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so i we, i'm i'm next episode we'll get to one where i do that I would, that's my okay. okay. <laughs> That'll be at the end of the season where you're like, and it's like, I don't, I don't know. Um, cool. So I'm, I'm not going to let that, <clears throat> that, that for me, I wanted to cover that because that's not going to color me watching the movie. It's been the thing that has stopped me from watching it up to this point is that oh. sort of like pushback of like, 
God, every time someone talks about like I've been listening to the soundtrack all day, it's like all right, I was just I push it, push the watch back a little bit. Well, look on the bright side, we're not doing this in July 2020, which means right. it hasn't just come to streaming, which means that everybody is not currently talking about it right now. Right. So it has died down a little bit. Yeah. On the flip side of it, there are a couple of things I do know about this movie. Okay. Number one, it's basically the retelling of the history of hip hop at the same time. So interesting, it is Hamilton's life, but the, apparently the musical style of the of the show evolves, and it's basically telling the evolution of hip hop as it goes through. I'm way Which, into that. Uh, yeah, as someone who I'm not the hugest fan of hip hop. Like my peak hip hop for me was 2000, 2001. Like that's okay. when hip hop spoke to me. Like I'm not Eminem and Dre of... were still together. <laughs> That's exactly where I got into hip hop. So yes, it was that right. particular thing. Um, so I'm I don't know the New World Order. I don't know all, mm. all of that kind of stuff. Not the New World Order. That's a wrestling thing. The New World Alliance. The NWA, I believe it was. I don't know. Mm. Whatever. That's not what NWA stands for, but uh, we can't say it on the show. <laughs> okay, whatever. But I don't know. Right. Is it? censored word with attitude by any chance yes that is it okay i figured it out without any hints that there was you great. go but you don't you don't have like the the west coast east coast like easy no. e dr dre Big E, tupac like you don't have some of that stuff or the new the new sort of kanye kind of revitalization no. literally the most i know about hip-hop comes from like a three-year period and okay. then when 50 cent appeared i was out Okay. <laughs> you dipped your toes in, you saw enough, you're like, all right, mm -hmm. I, I found a lot of good stuff. All right, bye. There's an Irish comedian who does a really good joke. Um, he's the guy with the spectacles from Shaun of the Dead. Um, okay. You know who I'm talking about. He yep. is uh, an Irish comedian. He's hilarious. You should see, see his stand ups. Mm. Um, might not have aged that well at this point. Probably not. Yeah. But one of the stand ups he does, he's talking about specifically hip hop. I was like, mm -hmm. you look at the evolution of like soul music and jazz and early, like, for lack of a better way to phrase this, African African American music, mm -hmm. and it was all about how the man is keeping you down, and you don't got nothing, but you're gonna try your best to get that nothing a little bit further, mm -hmm. and then you get into like late two thousands hip hop, and it's just like I've got all of this stuff, and none <laughs> of you got nothing, and I'm gonna shoot you and everything else, and it's just like that's about where I dropped off of hip hop. Oh uh, sure. Everybody started started talking about how much they've got, how they're rolling yeah. with a crew of like fifty people, and they've got limos for everyone. And where you got to start looking off the beaten path from like the what the what the pop music stuff is playing to sort of stuff that uh, maybe appeals to you more. Yeah, and right. that's roughly where I stopped. So I'm actually very interested in the portrayal because number one, mm. the only thing I know about this movie is that, but two. I know basically nothing about Hamilton. Alexander the Hamilton, person. the man. Yes. Right. The only thing I know about that is what I saw on Drunk History, which was kind of stolen <laughs> by Aubrey Plaza <laughs> doing the best Drunk History like video stuff ever. Right. And I'm pretty sure that that was narrated by the guy who wrote this musical. Like, okay, Lin, Lin, Lin Manuel Lin Miranda. Manuel, Ran, whatever his name is. Right. I'm pretty sure he's the one who did the drunk history for Hamilton. Okay. <laughs> that would that would make sense. I get the impression that this guy kind of leans into a lot of stuff like that in a way that you can respect, where it's like, eh, of course they brought him on. Like, eh, he'd, he'll take 15 minutes to kind of knock out a narration. That's kind of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I feel... Yeah, it was Lin Manuel Miranda who did the drunk history for Hamilton. <laughs> nice. Um, I feel like m my, w one of my biggest weaknesses in school was history. I could, I could oh. just never, all these like dates and stuff and all this related stuff, I could never tie together. To me, they were always like these thousands of disparate elements. They, they oh. never sewed together. It was like, oh, all this stuff made this thing happen or they were centered around this time or this this battle Dude, or whatever my favorite thing about that is if you think that's bad you've got 200 years of learning to do oh think i know about, like history class in england right. like <laughs> you want to talk about the invention of the cotton gin the industrial revolution right like crop rotation and in, in early you know 14th century how yep. you know 
relevant to video games these days how the vikings invaded england after <laughs> right. rome fell like right think about how bad we had it yeah where it's like all right here's bce let's go and it's like oh no um mm -hmm. yeah so I, I i i know that if you're gonna do something like portray a a founding father your there's going to be it's not going to be a one-to-one. He's -one a founding thing. father. He's one of the. One he of is, the yeah. Bunch. Yeah, um, you know that you're going into this that they're not going to portray him one-to-one, -one, especially because this isn't uh, this isn't Les Mis. This isn't a traditional Broadway musical. This isn't a <clears throat> you know a French. All right, pull open the playbook. Here's all the translated songs. This is this is very much a a, a different thing which i i think is great um but i'm i'm interested to see how how much they portray uh the founding father himself because i i'm sitting here thinking like how much of hamilton have i seen for how popular it is i feel like nothing. virtually nothing because yeah, literally nothing <laughs> they i feel like the the producers or whatever of the stage play seem to really aggressively tamp down a lot of sharing of that stuff. So mm -hmm. by the time it came out to streaming stuff, everyone's like, oh, it's Hamilton. Like, go watch it. It's really great. But I feel like <clears throat> I feel like I have seen more pieces of media poke fun at it than I have actually seen like the um the Gilmore girls a year in the life that like four part thing where they brought everybody back they put on a stage play at some point and they directly make fun of like poke fun of Hamilton and I feel like I've seen more of that than I have like here's a clip of the song of Hamilton which yeah is maybe good or bad I'm not sure I think it's a little bit of both, and obviously we are going to be watching the streaming version of this. Yeah, uh, the Disney Plus version. This year. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's also going to be a little bit of a break from the norm for this season, because we're actually going to be watching the stage play. Yeah, we're not the, going to be the watching Broadway. The yeah. It's the actual stage version of it, so... Right. It, I mean, it should be interesting. I literally know almost nothing about a lot of this. It's mostly just, you know... This musical captured the pop culture world in a way <laughs> right. that a lot of things haven't. For years? Yes, for yeah. years. It was like this and the Book of Mormon. Everybody was yes. just like, if you don't have tickets to go see these, you need to go get tickets and go see these. Right. That's a good Which point. I, yeah. I haven't seen anything from the Book of Mormon either, by the way. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I haven't either. Yeah. So I think I've seen more of from Avenue Q than I have either one of those two. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes sense. I like puppets. Yes, uh, and you also have a child, even though Avenue Q is not suitable. No, yeah, definitely not. Uh, all right, any uh, final thoughts here about uh, about Hamilton? Uh, no, I'm I'm interested in it. Like, I mean, I, my wife. I'm excited to watch it. On. Like, my wife's number one thing was make sure the subtitles are on because some of the stuff can go fast. So. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to go watch it. So let's go watch Hamilton. Mm -hmm. We have seen Hamilton, the stage play, more like Lay Miserable. Am I right? Oh wait, uh, no. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> really? Um, I. Hamilton is really interesting. I feel like I feel like I can draw a lot of comparisons to other musicals we really like this season, especially uh, when you look at Hairspray. Hairspray mm -hmm. starts off on a banger. Yes. Hamilton doesn't. <laughs> no. And I feel like this is going to be the hottest take because apparently everybody loves this song, but I think Burr I get what Burr's place is in the play, which is here is your narrator slash the fates slash musical intro, like whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. It is like the the simplest performance, which will get you introduced to 
it, it is actually going to be a rap musical. It is actually going to have this style of music, this style of, of performance. Yeah. But it's just kind of not weak, but it's just sort of like, especially, you know, Hairspray had Good Morning Baltimore. Uh, Les Mis has Look Down, where you're like, yeah, yeah let's go. Come on, let's go. And Hamilton <laughs> is just sort of like, all right, here we go. This is, this is Hamilton. Let's, let's get the good stuff. Um, uh, what did Mama Mia start with? I can't even remember. <laughs> oh, yeah, God, I don't even remember. Um, I feel like Mama Mia sort of maybe had the same problem, which is like, yeah, the first couple songs are pretty good, but, you know, it's it's okay. Yeah. Um, I, I do have to say, I think Hamilton's songs after that first one immediately get way better and just kind mm -hmm. of song over song get better and better and better throughout the entire thing. Um, I'm like, I'm not going to lie. Like I'm English folks. For those of you yeah. who can't tell from the voice, <laughs> I'm English. Um, the only part about Hamilton I knew was the part from drunk history where Aubrey Plaza plays him, um, plays <laughs> bear. Right. Um, and for enough, the same guy who wrote this play does the drunk history on it for uh, the record. Okay. So he knows his stuff about Hamilton, apparently. So that's the only thing I knew about Hamilton was he had beef with Aaron Bear, and basically he's kind of a D-bag. Right, as... so Aaron Burr shot him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is... And then he's more of a D-bag after his death, but we'll get to that eventually. Yeah, and like, it's... I think there's that really great line in the intro song, which is Aaron Burr saying, like, yeah, and I shot this dude. It's like, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, right. I forgot about that. All right, that, that'll come back up yeah. in about three hours. But I yeah. mean, I like, overall, like, we can obviously we can go into the, the songs as we talk as we talk it through, like, but overall, this is actually a very even-handed explanation of Hamilton. Because, yeah. let's face it, out of all of the founding fathers in the play, Mm -hmm. Hamilton's the one nobody talked about until this musical came out. Right, right. Like, everybody knows Jefferson. Everybody knows Washington. Right. Everybody knows Adam Driver or whatever the other president was called <laughs> that everybody hates. Yep, yeah, pre President Adam Driver. <laughs> yeah. Fire everything, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's right. More, more. Every day I wake up, punch the wall. That kind that's of right. Thing. Um, yep. Sorry, I'm just memeing myself. All his death, famous yeah. treaties. Yep. Yes. <laughs> well, like everyone knows all of them, but nobody really talked about Hamilton yep. until this play. And yeah. it's a very even handed approach to the play. Yeah. Because even though it, obviously it's told as Hamilton as the protagonist of the story, mm -hmm. like one of the last songs is like, yo, maybe he wasn't a protagonist. Maybe he was kind of an antagonist. And right. maybe he wasn't a good guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Certainly he not a, a hero. He was a talented person, maybe yes. not the best person. Right. He got like, a lot of I, stuff done, but like, who did he step on to get there? Yes, including his wife, but we'll get there eventually. <laughs> right. Right. Um, um, I mean, it's like, I think we, t we talked about this in part one, how the thing I've heard about this was it's also the evolution of hip hop and R&B as mm -hmm. you're going through. Not gonna lie, I totally had some songs I like some rhythm and and, and oh yeah style that I recognize mm -hmm. from late nineties hip hop and R and B all the way mm -hmm. through to like modern day stuff. I had a lot of of the evolution, shall we say? Because yeah, like a nice lot of wide influences. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I that's one thing I was I think I was surprised about is how many different genres of music. It's not just rap it's not just the rap musical um mm -hmm. I, how much stuff it gets influenced and brought into the show including um like your sort of traditional uh stage play stuff like with the with king george i think it's king george but that's my favorite part though is because if you look at the not the more traditional stuff yeah it's the sister song yep. sung by the two ladies <laughs> yep and it's King George's songs are right. the more traditional stuff. It's the people who are outsiders who are the people who sing the more traditional yep. stuff, which is genuinely a nice little touch. Yeah. But yeah, I hate to say it, but this performance, King George kind of stole it from me. 
Yeah, I, I when he came out, I was sort of like, what is going to happen here? And he sings that first song, You'll Be Back, which is like my first my first note here for the soundtrack. I love that song so that much. Like my shot is really My great. shot is a good is a good song. It's a great song, well, but it's, it's not my favorite. And I think the interesting thing about my shot is the it's the glue that keeps the first act together and mm -hmm. it's the very line that closes the first act. So it's like the the encapsulation of Hamilton's feelings throughout the entire thing and it it follows the rules that stuff like Les Mis follows where it's like we're going to take our chorus we're going to take this sort of look down uh one more day sort of thing and th uh, sort of thread that needle throughout the entire act and throughout multiple songs um mm -hmm. and, and I think that's super interesting because so much of Hamilton feels uh, so much of Hamilton the stage play feels like a direct answer to quote unquote older stage play musicals like Les Mis where Les Mis if you look at that they're lined up at the front of a stage here's a row of microphones they're all standing there singing and then they move on and the other the next song comes out um, mm -hmm. and I think the interesting thing about Hamilton is there's some really great choreography and it's not just like yes. and the stage spins as well shall yeah, we talk the, about that yeah the the two rotating parts of the stage that that spin like there's some cool choreography that's not just like synchronized dancing when they do that i'm always a sucker for it um mm -hmm. but there it feels like there's it's so much more of uh, a kind of newer stage play that you might as lame is you know started in 85 so of course this is going to be more modern but um... yeah i like i think i know why this is so beloved mm -hmm. and we'll get to judge our judgments get the lame is chopping block ready um <laughs> get to our judgments towards the end of this episode obviously but i think i know why this song is so beloved and that's because anybody can watch this mm -hmm. like anybody this is especially for the working class of america mm -hmm. this is a stage play that is aimed at them it's not about the french revolution it's not about shakespeare it's not about you know this thing that happened in in rome with phantom of the right. opera or whatever that thing set it's not these faraway places it hits home it's a style of music that is very modern yeah and it's a presentation that's very easy to digest like this, yeah. this is bringing musicals and an opera and theater performances to the masses, especially when you put it on Disney Plus. So yeah. I think this is a case of it's it's the scene from Pretty Woman where Richard Gere says to Julia Roberts, "With opera, two things happen: you either fall in love with it and it com consumes you and becomes part of your soul, mm -hmm. or you hate it." It's, right. it, it's the only in between and I think this thing being so accessible especially them releasing it good job of releasing it this year like at, yeah, yeah. All, on Disney Plus it was supposed to come out at the end of next year end of 2021 mm -hmm. yeah and I think them doing that I don't think we're seeing a, a whole bunch of like we've discussed this before the, the fan base effect mm -hmm. I don't think it's a case of we're seeing all of these people who are insufferable because of how much they love it I think we're seeing a whole new generation of musical and stage theater oh, performance yep. fans Absolutely. who would have never got the chance to pay the $700 a ticket to go and <laughs> right. see these things in the theater well, because think, they just didn't have the accessibility to do so. And I think that's part of that's part of what I'm experiencing as part of this season as well, where it's like, yeah, man, all right, musicals are still really good. Like, here are a, a slate of kind of modern and classic musicals, um, and they're all really great. And I, I think to your point, one of the interesting things about Hamilton is so much of it is the real history of Hamilton or, like, close enough that it's sort mm -hmm. of, like, editorialized a little bit. The fewest liberties taken. Yeah, and but it's not like... You get it? You get it? Because that was a joke about... The Civil it. War, yeah. liberties taken. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's also not like, 
In 1816, Aaron Burr wrote a letter to, and then someone else reads it and is my dearest to be, you know, it's just, okay. it's not this boring thing. It's like, it's part we're... of what scares me with with the show, because at some point me and you are going to sit down and we're going to do Dune at some point. <laughs> right. And right. I'm not talking about the 2021 Dune. We'll do that in its due time, in, yeah. in its Dune time. Um, I think, honestly, if we're going to do Dune, my recommendation is... Let's do the 85 movie, let's do the sci-fi show, let's do the oh, book, sure. and let's do the 2021 movie. Let's watch the same story four times and That's right. see what happens. That's right. Have um, them fight it out. Which which Dune is the best Dune? But that first Dune starts with like a five-minute intro explaining the world, and it's oh, mind-numbingly annoying. It's exactly oh, no. what you just did, but right. about Dune. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, I think... I think the... The introduction of the Skylar sisters, the helpless, satisfied, wait for it, like that kind of trilogy, oh. quadrilogy of songs is really strong. I think for me, that's some of the high points of uh, Act One is like, here's yeah. all these characters getting introduced. Especially the way they loop back to the old songs in the middle of the new song, of the, the new song, yeah. they loop back to the old song. They do like a... Repeat like a we'll flashback feature, like, the performance and the yep. song on the scene on the stage and then we'll go backwards or go forwards again to the current new song and yep. put that into context that that part was really great where it's like oh we're back to the, oh we're doing the other side of this interaction mm -hmm. with this other okay cool and then like yeah like you said it kind of all comes back together to the song they were singing before and it's like oh that yeah that was that was a cool moment that was that was pretty great Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie though, probably my favorite song in this is Ten Dual Commandments. Ten Dual Commandments is great. Uh, I, no, number one, I like the transition between Act 1 and Act 2, where it's like, Lafayette has left, that dude is playing another character in Act 2, and the introduction yes. is that song of What Did I Miss? And it's just like, alright, great, like, not only have you come back from intermission, but this dude has come back from France, it's just like, Hey, what happened? What a miss. Yep. <laughs> I thought that was really great. Yeah, he plays Jefferson in Act 2, doesn't he? He, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but no, Ten Dual Commandments is a hell of a good song. Like, yeah. like that's a fantastic song. Um, again, still in Act 1, like, History Has Its Eye on You, I feel, is a really solid song as well. Yep. Yeah, I like yeah, that one. Good. Yeah. Uh, the next song I have a note on is way in the back half of Act 2, so we'll get to that. Yeah, my, my last ones are all in, in kind of Act... My last two are, are both in Act 2. Um, okay, it, out of curiosity, because, sure. okay, so we'll jump into Act 2, we got the same people playing different characters, which like, a couple of people do, yep. which also, I love the whole race thing isn't even asked in this. It's like, yo, dude, shut up, who cares? The yeah, guys are like, performing, this is just, performing it. Like, here are the characters, yeah. I think the, the writer explained it as it's America then told by now, which yeah, is a I, very a, appropriate way to describe this. It's such this a good explanation, yeah. Um, and the room where it happens is one I love yeah. all of the Bear songs. Like, anytime yeah. Bear is singing by himself about something that's happened to him, it's, it's one of those songs where it's like, okay, I love that song. Yep. Yeah, I, that's that's one of my favorites. I I think my favorite one of the entire musical is Nonstop. Um, it's the one about why are you always writing like uh, yes, th writing one. like you running out of time. Yeah, uh, I, that one is not only is it such a different style of music, but still uh, in the same uh, sort of genre. Um, but man, is it just, it's one of those songs where it just, it has such a great sense of movement and it, 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 God, it's just really good. <laughs> yeah. I, so that's a fantastic song. Uh, my only other note from Act 2 songs wise is It's Quiet Uptown. Yeah. It's Quiet Uptown is also really good. And also kind of a kick in the face. Yeah. And it's. It's interesting because the the other ones I wrote down were the two cabinet battles, where it's very much a rap battle between. <laughs> yes, the... which I, I love the fact that they actually bring up microphones for it as well. They all yep. have these, these <laughs> microphones, but they bring up physical microphones for yep, the rap. They lean battle. all the way into it, and yeah, Jefferson does a mic drop. Like it's 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 really good, and I feel like it's 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 something you would expect out of 
a musical that that's going to use rap but it's fun to see they use it in a way that matters to the story where it's like these two people are arguing for how we set up this type of government and obviously we're gonna have some disagreements so you guys are gonna fight about it in front of the president um mm -hmm. yeah i yeah those two rap battles are good uh, uptown was really great um the return of the uh like the uh, 10 dueling commandments like twice in act two were both pretty heartbreaking each time yes yeah yeah a reprise is, is fantastic and yeah that one's a rough one as well but yeah that, I, it's such a good show yeah i uh, i my only criticism is i think it ends a little bit weak there isn't like that big like building moment i think it's nice that eliza gets the final song where it's mm -hmm. like look i have taken your legacy that is tainted let's to, like the list to kind of put yeah. it nicely and i've made something good out of it so like at the end of the day the real hero is eliza sure because she finally did the right thing um sorry but you it, said at the end of the day and immediately i broke oh, i my right. mind went into at the end of the day <laughs> <laughs> that's so good um but like i think it's nice that she gets the last word but there isn't you know comparing it directly to our previous one lame is where it has this huge build up and this huge entire ensemble chorus at the end that this doesn't end with that like it ends with eliza Ooh. dying i guess um which is fine but like there wasn't that big like act one gets it where you get that 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 big song at the end and the very last line he says is i'm not gonna waste my shot and then boom it goes to black like that's a big moment and we yeah. don't really get that at the end of act two i think the only thing with act two is like the, the the thing that i think act two is strongest with is it, the way it ends it's like your legacy is but is told by the people who tell your story like aaron bear comes right. on and says look i am the villain of this piece i am right. only the villain of this piece because of the people who tell the story and the people who tell the story view me as the villain like right. the writer himself said like he, he loves hamilton he thinks he, he was a flawed great person but at the same time he premeditated premeditatively wrote letters right. about <laughs> how he was going during the duel with bear he was going to be a good christian and shoot in the air right and then sent them out and then after the duel and he shot dead he paints bear as the bad guy even though <laughs> right he technically they're both about the same level of quote unquote bad right and hamilton like, can't stop running his mouth yeah and bear can't right. make a decision or like show him how he actually feels because he just wants to say what it takes to get ahead right like some people who may or may not currently be in power when the, at the time of recording of this but <laughs> right. that's fine right. we won't go into that right now right but it's like i think the the reason why it's actually got a, a, a good ending for me is because it's like look we are the people who carry on the tale we are the people who are telling this story and yet in this story hamilton's kind of the good guy but kind of not because if you look at the facts he was not great yeah and bear wasn't as bad as everybody thinks partially and thanks to hamilton being such a great crap talker when he, he put his <laughs> mind to it right that's a good point yeah yeah I, I think it's a it's a very interesting look back on a real life person, a real life situation, relatively accurate factual, mm -hmm. you know, history. Yeah. And being like, you know, maybe don't believe everything your history books tell you at the same time. Yeah. Which is is interesting. Uh one of the parts I forgot that I really liked is, you know, the the intro song, Alexander Hamilton, is the 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 play and the musical starts with that one line about here are all the the reasons why hamilton is like down on his luck he's the son of a you know so-and-so yeah, he's, he's an immigrant his his family's yeah. dead he came from the caribbean yeah and it's sort of like celebrated where it's like he's an immigrant and he's getting he's stuff done so and then at the end where which is a great line um at the end burr turns that back on hamilton and says like here are all the things that I once celebrated as a positive, and now they are negatives because I hate you. 
<laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. like now, now these things that were positives are now my weapons against you. Um, yeah. It, interesting. It's, it's, I have to say it's really well written. Um, I don't love, I don't think I love every song, but I think all of them are good. Um, yes. I, much... I will say out of the movies we've watched, I feel like this is the, I feel like this is the most open middle of the road kind of yeah. thing. Like I think Les Mis is better. Yeah. I can't, I can't help the way I feel. Just production. Obviously, it's a movie, so it's got production values and everything. You watch the stage show, so maybe you can say that if the stage show version is better. But I think I, I prefer that because at the same time, when it comes to this, I was learning a lot. Like I was yeah. basically doing a crash course in American founding fathers' <laughs> history at the same time as trying yep. to enjoy this musical. Listen to very, very fast songs. Mm -hmm. Like. I might give the soundtrack a listen to just to try and see if I can get some of the finer points of it. Like the performances were great. I love the yep. music. I love the fact that it's a hip hop inspired kind of like production rather than the traditional ones. Like I absolutely yeah, with like that. so plenty of traditional influences where it's like you uh -huh. might have a beat here with a piano and some strings. Like they they're more than happy to kind of mix up a bunch of different genres. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like that's when I, when I say I think it makes it accessible to a wider audience. Yep. That's one of the reasons why, is because this is a style of music that people are used to. Yeah, this is. Yep. I could follow it pretty well. Little mm. bits and pieces here I missed, but that's mostly just because I don't know my American history that well. Yeah, but in general, I followed a lot of it, and even if I didn't catch the exact words, I caught the flow, the theme that was going through the songs, mm. and like. It's performed fantastically. It's like the production is fantastic. Uh, I have zero problems with the race and gender thing where you've got like the, obviously the female performers, obviously as the soldiers as well. Mm -hmm. Zero problems with any of that. And genuinely a solid, I can understand why people yes. are so in love with this. Yep. I also think those people probably haven't watched a lot of musicals in their time. It's a good gateway though. Like you said, it's a very like, good gateway. Yeah, if you like and this, there are hundreds of years worth of things that you can go watch that you might like yes. more, you might like less. Um, but I, I did want to touch on the production standpoint here as sort of my last note. I have to give a lot of credit to the director of this because there's so much. Like I talked about with Les Mis's 25th anniversary performance. Like here's a line of microphones and a line of people and. You just kind of shoot them. You've seen sort of uh, shots of pr stage pr productions where it's like, I got the one camera and they're just shooting everything. I love that. And the, they the, the fake zoom where it's like, now we need to focus on this part. So we're right. just going to... Digital enhance. zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I really appreciate how the camera was getting in on some of the shots. There was wide shots. They're shooting from above down, you know, down below for some of the stuff, especially the, the hurricane tornado stuff. Um, you know, they they really tried to capture more than just here's the stage. It sort of stays there the entire time. Um, I, oh. I think from a video standpoint, that's probably one of the reasons why this is, is going to be so good. Cause it's not just, that kind of boring one shot. I think that's, I think the, the director deserves a lot of credit for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. I hope it's a gateway. And uh, I, I mean, this season for me is kind of a gateway to being like, Oh yeah, that's right. Musicals are really good. I, I do like, I do like musicals overall. Um, and I, yeah. it's probably Speaking not my, go ahead. go ahead. Oh, it's, it's oh. probably not my favorite in this entire season so far out of all of them Les Mis is probably my favorite um but this one is this one is up there because it's 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 just a really solid show the entire time and I like rap a lot so like it, um, and it moved like speaking yes. of moving like this is two hours and 40 and change yeah and it moves yeah and and thankfully had an intermission I appreciate that I could get up and go to the okay. bathroom and come back um but like you're right. It, it, it moves the whole time and it's Hamilton is just really good. You know, we talked about in the first segment at sort of a hot take that I didn't really want to watch this. Um, and I definitely don't regret it. Um, I think this was, I think this was really solid in one. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. And speaking of modern musicals, um, 
with potentially accessibility and different music styles. So we talk about the next episode. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about our uh, our final episode here for uh, for season four, our first musicals episode. We're gonna watch The Greatest Showman, uh, bringing back um, uh, Jean Valjean himself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I playing seventeen. Uh, so uh, yeah, making the end of our list by one year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, playing uh, P.T. Barnum in uh, a, a telling of that tale. Um, I'm excited to watch this one. We'll talk about it here in the intro, but uh, the next episode. But I'm I'm excited to watch this one for for a number of reasons. But uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in our next episode. So thank you everyone for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye bye.